different angle today. Do you have a small hobby area or do you have too much stuff to fit into whatever size hobby area you have? I'm sure you can all empathize with that one. This is gonna be about my current setup, how I run my small desk and hobby area that I have, which I record from, paint in, and podcast from as well. So it has to be multi-purpose and it's just gonna run through what I lay out where and why and it's gonna morph into a series where I hopefully upgrade the small hobby area that I have. This is a popular topic of discussion. We put up a question on Instagram and a lot of you had some thoughts and some questions about it. So number one, we would like your thoughts or your suggestions and your questions about small hobby areas here. We will give a prize out to the best question and the best suggestion and that'll be a brush set and a texture palette of your choice, any of the ranges. Yeah, we'd like your help on it. So please do pop all of them below. All we're gonna do here is we're gonna roughly go through how I run my desk currently, and then we'll look at the first of a couple of improvements that I'm gonna make. Okay, so here is the area where I paint, which is pretty messy currently. A Little bit of art on the wall, big bit of art on the wall. Essentially the reason that my space is set up as it is, is because it's tiny. All the paint is mounted back against the wall apart from the very bottom. I don't have step storage. It's just way more efficient and I can see everything. Assembly stuff goes to the right generally and then I've got my closer things or projects or failed dragons to the left. Um, I set myself up pretty low because that allows me to put my elbows on the desk. That's not how you see me painting in tutorials but that's how I would paint if I wasn't being recorded. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the reason it's set up like it is. Mounting your paints like this saves an incredible amount of space. If you don't have much available, I'd really recommend it. Okay, so there's two things, if your hobby area is small, that I think are like the immediate concerns. One is just space. Like you have to find out efficient ways to store stuff. You'll see that in the video coming up shortly. The other one is kind of space related, it's proximity and access. So, you know, the things you use the most, they should be the easiest to get to and there should be no obstructions in the way of them. So all your favorite paints in front of you or in like a little box that you can put in front of you or something like that something practical to hold art references. I've got a little stand that we designed. I use that and it's just got a smartphone on it or it could have a tablet or even sometimes I'll just cut out the boxes. But you don't want anything that you can't get to easily that you use frequently. Closest to you with nothing else on top of it or in front of it, the stuff you use the most frequently. And then as you get further from you or indeed in another place in a box or whatever that you can just bring over, the stuff that you use less frequently. Things that you're not gonna use for ages, they just shouldn't be close to you in your hobby area if it's small like, you know, boxes of models that are unbuilt. Like you do not need those next to you always. It's nice to see them. And it's great that we've all got too many, but you don't need them around you um, on like a daily sitting down to paint basis. So if any of you are new to this channel, two of our regular themes are both my incompetence and my mistakes, very, very common, and also my suffering. So what we're about to jump into, uh, which will break up with some more tips about layout and what I think is important about small hobby areas is me installing wall mounting our cabinets that we've designed, which I feel are the best miniature display cabinets out there. We had a long list of things that we wanted them to do, dust free, modular, lit up, um, had the option to be wall mounted because I just don't have space for something else. So uh, yeah, let's start with uh, me trying to work out how that's gonna go. Okay, so here we are. Now I'm not Ross from Faux Hammer, so I'm doing what I would call a standard install. I've used our handy guide. I'm just gonna go for the standard spray and the approach that I've taken is that I made a little mark on the maximum height that I wanted the cabinets to be because I want them to be behind me when I'm doing intros in this case. And I put blue tack on one corner and then I just raised and lowered the other corner with masking tape until things were level with my spirit level, which it turns out I struggled with using even though there's only one way to use it. Anyway, this is what we've got and then I will just be uh, using the guides to make pilot holes then we'll be good to go. We'll see how this goes. I am not Mr. DIY one bit, so fingers crossed. I am predictably unprepared. I have used my 10 year old Citadel pin vise to make the pilot holes just there in the center of each cross. And then due to running out of the uh, power pack for my drill, I've had to be a little bit creative with how I've made the holes to the raw plugs, but everything you need is provided. So uh, yeah, just a matter of filling in each of these holes now, and then we're gonna be onto the exciting bit. Fingers crossed. We're 
all plugs are up, I would recommend making use of electricity because it's been invented for a long time and really saves you a lot of effort. I'm gonna go and clear up my dusty hands because I'm about to start handling the cabinets. I'm gonna wash that, hoover up a little bit, and then we're gonna jump on with the exciting bit. Vacuum panels next. Each of them has a little corner bit. Now these, these can be reversed, uh, and I would actually encourage people to be creative with them. You can always buy a replacement if something goes wrong, or just spray another color and go again. I don't know, you could laminate a backdrop on there, you could put your favorite fantasy art on there, you could somehow match existing furnishings with it. There we go. Okay, so because I don't trust myself to put these on the wall correctly, I've just lined them up in the same shape they're gonna be on the wall, and we're gonna turn them on now for the first test. I've just linked each to the other, got the power cable, and then I'm probably gonna mask the uh, the wires to the back to keep it a little bit neater. Fingers crossed. And then, oh, uh, what have I done? Oh, well, yeah, that'll, uh, that'll do it, one moment. Okay, so me being embarrassingly impractical aside, we are good. I'm just gonna tape the wires to the back in that formation with a bit of masking tape, and we can pop them up. Okay, so this would be much easier with a friend, but laser works, I'm trying to solo it. The approach I've taken is just to put one screw bottom right, I centre that, screw it in a tiny bit, and then put in top left. At that point, I've not even screwed it in fully, but it's just to make sure it's equal, and then I'll do them up diagonally. I'm just gonna use two for the baby one, because it's so light, I don't think it'll be an issue. But uh, yeah, it's beginning to come together. <clears throat> Spot the massive user error. So this is gonna get rotated 90 degrees because gravity exists. That is super secure. Okay, so if you don't have a friend, get a desk. So we've got this kind of held at the right height here. I have connected one cable to the other. And what we're gonna do is just center the top right hole, screw it in a little bit, center the top left one. And importantly, we've left the cable poking out the top. I'll pretend this isn't the second take for that. So <laughs> yeah, cable poked out the top to link it to the next one. Make sure everything is screwed in electrics wise. Get the wire to a point that I'm happy with. Center that top right. Tighten it until we're flush with the wall. There we go. <laughs> They've got different sounds. Okay, we'll just repeat that and we'll go on to the next one. So another thing is particularly uh, not like of a concern, but it's just worth bearing in mind. If you have a multi-purpose area, um, how many of you run your desktop computers um, and how many of you run your laptops at the same area that you paint in? Genuinely interested in that. Um, when this goes live, I'll do a poll because I really want to know that actually. If you've got a monitor in front of you, there's a couple of things you want to be aware of. Like if you've got an airbrush, a uh, slight overspray, you can clean them pretty easily. Um, it's not the end of the world, but you know, if you don't need to get crap and paint on it, don't. Um, and then just the space around it needed for other stuff. Do you have an easy way to store your keyboard? Can you pop it on top of something? Is there a little shelf? A few little things like spaces so you can slide your keyboard away conveniently um, is really, really good because if you've got things on top of and under each other in an already small area, you're just shrinking and shrinking and shrinking even further the space that you have to paint at until you're painting in like, you know, like a little six inch square in front of you on the desk. Obviously I'm an idiot. They're gonna install perfectly, it's just person installing them is an absolute dummy. Hey, we did it. Victory. Incompetent, disorganized, dyslexic idiot installs cabinets. So, for those of you who are worried about DIY incompetence, masking tape on my shirt, because I'm very, very, very good at DIY. It's just easy when you're on your own. I get to the point, I just installed these. I am not a practical man. They look incredible. That is just instantly way more professional. I cannot wait to put my models in them. Pretty psyched. Let's pack them with minis. So here's one that I think doesn't get covered enough. Make the area pleasant, like make it nice, make it a nice area to be and have like previous projects there. Um, have, I've got artwork up from my favorite book series and from my favorite films um, and turquoise stuff, because I love turquoise. 
So if you can put stuff that you find inspirational or you just like to look at, especially if it's a small area, it does really make a difference to the feeling of it. It shouldn't feel like going to your hobby prison. I'm dressed like I'm going to hobby prison. It shouldn't feel like you're going to your hobby prison. It should be a nice area to spend space in. Spend time in should be obvious, but a lot of people do not think about it whatsoever. Whatever makes you happy in there, lighting, you know, both for your painting and, um, you know, like LEDs or strips or stuff like that. Um, you know, that's really, really important. Where will head be? Here. Hello. Apologies for the audio. Um, I haven't turned these on yet. I should probably have given the minis more of a dust, but it took forever to put them in anyway. Turns out I've got quite a lot of toys and I just can't wait. So I haven't put the frames on yet. That's going to make a difference. I haven't turned them on yet, but the miniatures in. That's going to make a huge difference. Let's go. All right. Oof. Oh. Me. Shit. <laughs> Instant level up. My God. That is the best my army's ever looked. Like ever. Oh my God. I picked my um, it's my oldest army. One of my, my second oldest army actually, but the oldest army that I put a lot of effort into. My turquoise army, which is why I like turquoise. So. Oh my God. <laughs> These are magnetized on, by the way, in case you can't tell. <laughs> Oh my god. I should probably have the green ball going the same way. Should wash my hands again before this. Moment of truth. Are we still recording? We are still recording. One, two, three. Look how good my boys look. First model I ever painted really well. Those frames look insane. Black would look really cool. I'm stoked. I am so overjoyed with that. Genuinely, I'm slightly emotional. <laughs> that is absolutely gorgeous. They look so good. I'm so pleased with them. So I fiddled around them a bit. I've dusted my models. I should have dusted them before I put them in. Absolute idiot. Dust your models before you put them in the cabinets, peeps, please. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much if you've backed our Kickstarter. If you haven't, there's a link here. There's also going to be a link in the pinned comment down below. And as ever in that pinned comment, what I'll do is any comments that we receive that are particularly useful about um, product tips or layout tips or particularly useful things that people do with small hobby areas, we will copy them all into there and credit the people who've done it. Thank you very much. Um, and you can use that as a kind of repository for useful information. We'll use it and we will take all of your questions or suggestions on board for the next time that we do an episode in this series. What would you like to see me upgrading? What are you particularly interested in from my desk that you've seen? People always ask about my um, fairly unique looking paint storage. It's the Element Games paint storage, but I spray them black. <laughs> That's it. They look really different when you spray them black and I use the last 10% of my Chaos Black sprays, which I don't use on models, which you should never use on models. I use that to spray them. It's the lower quality stuff at the end of a can. And I just like working against a dark area. It helps me select my paints and they look way better like that as well. Black is great for me around my hobby. Just nice for selecting paints and stuff. So um, that's it. Please like, please comment, please subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And please suggest more content that you like to see below. We do all this for you, the viewers, so uh, chime in.